This is where it all begins with the artists and the designers and the creative team. The artwork then gets digitized and transferred into a computer. The game then gets tested on a rewritable game cartridge. And here's where it all ends up on your PC screen. A hot new game with great graphics, animation, and sound. Now what makes a great new computer game? We'll try to find out today as we take a look at the best new PC games on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Hewlett Packard, working with industry leaders to ensure compatibility across the board and across the network. HP PCs, you're looking at partnership in a whole new light. Additional funding is provided by LaserJet printers from Hewlett Packard. Everything from a new color solution to models designed specifically for small businesses. HP LaserJet printers, you do your job, we'll do ours. And the Software Publishers Association. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and with me today is Johnny Wilson, Editor-in-Chief of Computer Gaming World magazine. You spend all your time uh, playing with games. I want to ask you, first of all, what is your favorite all-time game, Johnny? I believe it'd have to be Sid Meier's Civilization. Where else can you start from scratch and build your empire and annihilate other people's empires if you need to? And there's some violence in there, too, so you get a chance to sort of, you know, beat guys and play war. That's true, sure. If you're a testosterone-driven guy, you're there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, on this issue of violence and sex and violence in games, uh, some parents are concerned about their kids doing that. Why are we seeing that so much in computer games? Well, I think violence is the easiest way to express a life and death situation and get the adrenaline pumping. I think it's inevitable to have conflict there. And I think sex is there because it expresses relationships in a quick way of telegraphing ultimate yeah. concern. Now, speaking of sex, now this is a new game just came out from Interplay called Voyeur. Uh, it's a little bit sexy, but it's basically a great interactive movie, uh, wonderful interactive fiction. Their approach to keeping the kids out, because I think it says 17 and older, is you need a PIN number, kind of like you do with an ATM to get in. So if you can sort of click on the right number, uh, it's meant to keep kids out. Some people think it'll just keep adults out. The kids will know how to figure that out. Uh, what's happening on the rating side while we wait for this to boot up? Well, there's two philosophies. One gives uh, age-graded ratings from the video game industry and makes the decision for you. The other tells you how much violence, how much language, and how much sex there is in a product and lets you as the consumer or parent make your own decision. Yeah. Well, on this one, this is just about to start up. And you can see here from this is a scene. What you do in this game is you kind of peer, kind of rear window meets mist, I think you yes. describe, Voyeur. Uh, and there's, you know, a couple of crazy things in here, but there's Robert Culp, Grace Zabriskie. I mean, wonderful actors, wonderful acting in here. In fact, Robert Culp won an award uh, yes. for his acting in this uh, movie, CD, game, whatever it's called. Uh, it's really a great piece of interactive movie making. All right, Johnny, today we're going to show you seven great new games that belong on your PC. One thing that has really made game playing a more exciting experience on a home computer has been the addition of quality sound effects and music. The king of game sounds is a guy from Austin, Texas, who they call the Fat Man. George Sanger, also known as the Fat Man, is a musician on a mission to make the music you hear from your MIDI sound card sound as good as when it was recorded. Here's to gathering food from nature, to living off the land. I think that we'd have rather eat the sand. Sanger began composing for computer games when the audio quality, as he puts it, was like ice cream truck music. After moving to Austin, Texas, he started a group, now known as Team Fat, to compose and record high-quality soundtracks for computer games. The team has produced the soundtracks for over 80 games, including Seventh Guest and Wing Commander. The fat man's concern with sound quality stems from the lack of standards among sound card vendors. This, this huge new technology has been based on an incomplete spec. Uh, it's, it's based on this thing called General MIDI, which doesn't have any provision for how loud one instrument should be compared to another. So through no fault of their own, these well-meaning computer peripheral manufacturers have created a whole slew of cards that sound great when you write for them, but when I'm writing on my Roll and sound canvas, uh, and everybody else who's writing for games is writing on that. Uh, the music that we send out will sometimes, in fact, invariably have one instrument that's a little too loud or a little too quiet. Or uh, actually, what we found is we, we have entire musical passages that get lost. 
To put some order into the sound card chaos, Sanger started a certification program for manufacturers called Fat Labs. When the cards pass the Fat Labs tests, they're awarded the Team Fat seal, a kind of personal insurance that the instruments on the sound card are properly balanced. The result is musical output that is more true to the original recording. Once a standard is established, George Sanger sees a new generation of games on the horizon. We will be composing environments. People who play the games will actually be creating pieces of music. They are, the, the piece that we write is the work of art. The person who performs it, in a way, participates in the art. Uh, so so we don't, we're not writing songs, we're not writing music anymore. We're writing these playgrounds in which someone can come and be a performer. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. There are many different types of computer games, education, action adventures, strategy, simulations, and sports. We're going to start with one of the best new educational games. It's Astronomica from HyperQuest, and here to show it to us is Joni Stewart. Okay, this is sort of mist meets redshift, I think, as you described it. Uh, it's an, it's an, a game, but you also learn stuff while you're doing it. Yes, exactly. We've taken the subject of, ast of astronomy, and we've married it with games that are fun to learn, but it's an interactive learning process. So okay, it's, show me. It's fun. Okay. Um, this is a, it involves a quest for a missing professor whose top secret project, Astronomica, has been canceled. And his daughter, Sarah, has come to us to ask for our help in finding her father. And we break into the SkyQuest complex, which is where we are now. And we are told that our mission is to reboot all the exhibits in the Exploratorium, which is where the action takes place. By rebooting the exhibits, we're playing puzzles, and there are 27 puzzles that are hidden in and around the, uh, the Exploratorium. So we navigate our way through this 3D environment, as I'm doing, and there are hundreds of screens to, to make our way through. And I'm taking us up to the first, well, one of the puzzles, and this is the control panel for a puzzle. Exploring Planetary Pinball. And each one starts off with an overview. The sun holds nine planets in the web of its gravity. So we get our little lesson Each here, and then we get instructions based on how we're going, what's the physics of solving the game? Exactly. Okay, um, so let's is, play the game. This little I button here gives you the objective. Okay. okay, before we solve it, I'm going to take us into this question mark, the help panel. And here we meet the mentors, and we have Einstein, Galileo, a telescope director, and two grad students. We also have a, f a fully uh, interactive encyclopedia mm -hmm. of astronomy with illustrations here, but we don't have time for that. So I'll click on Einstein. Okay. See what the Albert An has to say. The part of genius is not to give up. <laughs> okay, okay, don't give up. Sort of helpful. <laughs> okay. Um, now, the object of this game is to shoot a comet and then the outer planets and then the inner planets into their correct orbits. So you choose a speed mm -hmm. and a launch angle and fire. Oop. And that we crashed. One, we didn't, we didn't that one crashed. So, so you have to change uh, we try speed a different or angle speed, or both. Right. Your comet is now in order. And so we solved so that puzzle. Program. Right, well, we okay. solved the first part of it. Right. Um, but all the games have, all the puzzles have this sort of interactivity. There's build a telescope, uh -huh. um, launch a probe, uh, plot a course, identify the constellations, mm -hmm. uh, create a universe, create a star. Okay, so this is now the second part now, of the puzzle where you have to you launch the outer planets the and then uh -huh. have the inner planets. Shoot but I don't think I have time to show it to you. Oh. Okay, that was our okay. new objective. I'm going to take us out of this puzzle and try and navigate out of the room, but before you leave any puzzle room, mm -hmm. you have to check the wall monitors. Because if you don't, you can get kicked out of the game by the night watchman. Okay, so you're, so you're sneaking in here to solve these puzzles and And he's, he's following you and he, he okay. can kick you out and you, that's no fun. Okay, so what happens here? So here we either get a message from Sarah or we get to watch the night watchman. Sarah is the professor's daughter. Yes. We've got a real problem. The cooling system's messed up. This whole place could blow. I'm going down to the tunnel to turn it off. So that was a clue, okay. a clue for later. All right, that's Astronomica. Very cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, in the action-adventure category of games, Wing Commander has been one of the leading titles for years, but now Wing Commander 3 has come out, and it is a spectacular game. Mark Day is going to show us how to play it. First of all, this comes on four 
CDs. This has to be one heck of a game. I have visions of sort of moving discs no, in and out. Absolutely not. It's played similar to playing a laser disc at home. Once you're done with disc one, you move on to disc two and you do not go back. So you play through it in a linear fashion. Okay, now this has really been described as a paradigm shift in games. I mean, this really is an interactive movie, isn't it? Absolutely. And matter of fact, here's an interactive sequence that we're looking at right now. It's the arrival of uh, Admiral Tolwyn onto the space carrier. Uh, you're involved in an intergalactic struggle with the uh, alien Kilrathi. And uh, this is demonstrating the interactive nature. We have both linear storytelling, sort of traditional filmmaking, as well as giving the player the ability to make a choice. Well, the legendary colonel. It's good to see you again. Thank you, Admiral. So Mark Hamill, exactly. You can either choose to score points with the Admiral, you know, somewhat brown knows the Admiral, yeah. or you know, decide we're all equal. We'll choose the latter there. And that's going to determine the direction of the exactly. story. Exactly. That will determine here. really your relationship with your, uh, the other Same members of your team. There. Okay. So within uh, the game, we can, we, I'm just going to move on from here. Uh, you can you move around the flight carrier victory, moving up to the flight deck. Hmm. And we'll just go and get a mission briefing real quickly. Welcome, and so what we've Colonel. done is we've really combined you know, the As best aspects of traditional know, filmmaking with interactive. Uh, you see, uh, before every mission, of which there are 50, you receive a, uh, a briefing from destiny. either Admiral Tolwyn mm -hmm. or the captain of the ship. Gentlemen, I give and you the Confederation's brand new weapon that they've just created to help uh, hopefully ultimately defeat the Kill Rafi. And I'm just going to move right into the mission. Mm -hmm. So we can actually get into the shoot 'em up action. Exactly. Part. And again, there's the interactive movie, there's sort of traditional linear movie, as well as a fully functional combat flight scenario that's state of the art. So you see uh, Mark getting on, Mitchell. I should say Colonel Blair, Mark okay, Hamill. Mark Hamill. <laughs> it's, uh, you're getting right. confused sometimes. All right, so and we're loading up the mission right exactly. now, and we're going to get out there and and fly around, fly and shoot. blow up the okay, bad guys. Right. You're clear to take off. Here you are. And so we're leaving the deck of the carrier. And moving into enemy territory. Wow, that's nice. Looking. Absolutely, fully, fully modeled yeah. texture map, uh, polygon graphics. It's a, it's, a, it's a 3D flight simulator, I should say space flight simulator. Right. All right, just show us a little bit of the, the, the action arcade stuff. There. Certainly. Move in for the kill here. Unfortunately, they're approaching from a little far away in this That's battle. all right, we'll give you time. We'll oh, there's now, one that snuck up on you. Now, how, how do you manage the kind of speed you need for this arcade action when you're coming with the CD-ROM? Well, in this case, it does play off the CD-ROM. You were given, as a player, you're given the option to load more or less on of the game drive? onto your hard okay. drive um, as to your system's needs as well as the game can be played as we're seeing right now in VGA or it can also be played, excuse me, we were watching SVGA, it uh -huh. can be played in okay. VGA which for people of different systems and I have just been destroyed. No, the I expert. Did not, I did not do well. I turned to talk and I was, I've <laughs> That's all right. So blown it, out it's of hard space. to fight and talk at the Absolutely. same time. Absolutely. All right, Wing Commander 3 looks great. Thanks a lot, You're Mark. very welcome. All right, as we've just seen, computer games have become full-scale Hollywood productions. Now, how do they integrate all these movie stars into a computer game? We're going to show you a few examples from two of the leading interactive game companies, Rocket Science Games and Mecha Deus. Holly, I'm going to fry your ass. This is Ned Beatty, a film and television actor, and now a character in a computer game called Lodestar from Rocket Science. Lodestar is a science fiction adventure that mixes live action sequences with digitally painted backdrops, computer graphics with tiny 3D models, and full sized mock ups. It's an example of a new generation of computer games that mixes the digital with the physical. Beatty plays a futuristic sheriff and the nemesis of outer space truck driver Tully Bodine, played by Barry Primus. The goal is simple, if not obvious. Players must maneuver the Lodestar craft into a spaceport to rescue a load of camels stranded on the moon. Several gigabytes of video clips were compressed and arranged so that no two plays are alike. The mixture of Hollywood and Silicon Valley leads to some strange but ingenious combinations. Characters and models are filmed separately, then composited over digital backgrounds. These create a realistic link to the game's fantastic environment. Holly, I'm going to fry your ass. Also counting on movie star magnetism is Daedalus Encounter from Mecha Deus. The characters in this game include some well-known flesh-and-blood actors, including film star Tia Carrera and Christian Boucher. 
the human actors have to stretch their imaginations to the limit to create the illusion of reality within a digital world. The game is played through the eyes of a third party called Casey, who actually is a disembodied brain on the ship. And he can control a remote control probe that can fly around with the ca characters as they explore the ship. And uh, this is the interactivity branching here for the game. Um, you help the characters at various points. You have to solve puzzles. You have to uh, go out and find objects um, and, uh, and help them defeat uh, creatures which are flying around the ship that are kind of like flying piranha that we call crin. Living actors will undeniably add a new dimension of realism to computer games. Whether they'll add pleasure to the game playing experience is too early to tell. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. Strategy games are one of my favorite categories. These are the games that keep you up until 4 o'clock in the morning because you refuse to quit until you solve the next phase of the game. One of the best new strategy games is Master of Magic, and Jim Caldershaw is here to show it to us. Jim, what's the point in Master of Magic? What am I trying to do? Well, in Master of Magic, you take on the role of a wizard um, competing against up to four other wizards to try to uh, conquer two different worlds that we have in the game. Um, okay, so this is one of the worlds here. Right, this, this is the world of Arcanus right here. It's the mostly Earth-like world. Um, and uh, right here we can see we've got this city. Um, got a couple cities on our, on our world right here. These are cities that I control. And purple here, that's the, uh, some adversary, an, okay, another so that's wizard. controlled that's, by other guys, the bad guys. Yeah, he's What's moving in on my territory. I'm seeing there? Um, these are magic nodes. Um, I've already, uh, they give me magic every turn. I've already conquered these. Okay. And uh, so they're showing that, yes, I control these and uh, each one of these squares that has the animation over it. Okay, so what should we go after now? What should we try to get? Okay, we have these creature layers also in the game that uh, contain great amount of treasure, but they're guarded by monsters. Mm -hmm. um, we'll go ahead and uh, move three of my units uh, into this lair and see if we can get some treasure. This right here is telling me that yes we've spotted some some hellhounds within within this. Okay, so there's neat stuff you want there but there's guys defending them. Exactly. All right so w what are all the elements in this battle? Okay right now we can see that yes there, there were hellhounds in there but uh, there didn't happen to mention the fact that there was this nasty demon lord, this fire elemental and this uh, lesser demon right here also in there. Okay and what are your and, guys? Uh, these are my these are the three guys that I moved in down here. These are my two heroes and, and the, my great worm and um, what you can do is you can move each one of your guys individually and determine, I'll move this guy up two spaces there. And I could decide if I wanted this uh, hero right there, if I decided oh, I want him to choose any number of, of spells that I happen to learn, that I happen to have mm -hmm. learned at the moment, or if I wanted him to just move or whatever, so I can just can control. So they can cast spells against the bad guys, they can just shoot arrows at the bad guys. Right, or use their normal weapons or, or So you've got to figure you. out the strategy of what's right given the enemies you've got. Right, right if you have archers, you might want to hold them back instead of moving them forward so okay. the archers use their ranged weapons. Right now I've just clicked on the auto button, uh, which what that does is that just has the computer control both sides. Um, some, it eliminates some of the strategy aspect for some people that don't want to get bogged down with some of the details of maneuvering each, uh -huh. each unit individually. All right, so you won that game. So I won that game and in there I got So we this, got some good stuff. Right, I got a spell and some uh, chain mail. This chain mail I have now, I can give to each one, any one of the heroes that happen to so be in that battle. So you're better armed for another battle. Right, that might uh, I'll give it to line. that guy. And uh, here I am uh, learning that, that, well, that new spell. This is some new spell that you got, that's great. Right, this is the new spell. And uh, here the spell is being uh, added to my spell book. Now there's a diplomacy part of this, right, too. I mean, you can make uh, alliances with some of the other bad guys. Right, like uh, here's the purple guy right here is like infringing on my territory. You can go to this screen right there, and this shows me the different wizards that are in the okay, game. maybe try to make a deal with them. Right, here's purple right here, and right now, see, he hates me. Okay. And he He's at war with me. That's why he's moving into my territory. And make sure right you don't now. get cheated when you make the deal with him. Right. All right, Master of Magic, we've got to move on. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's go over here and take a look at NASCAR racing. Now, one of the neat things about computer games is that they let you do things you could never otherwise do, like drive a souped up race car in the NASCAR circuit. Fred Butters is with Papyrus, and they're the guys who make NASCAR racing. And this is pretty cool simulation here. Show me how you play this. Okay, NASCAR is a game that lets you experience uh, driving a high performance race car. In the main menu here, let me take you into the options, and you can go into the controls. Most of our users tend to use a joystick or a steering wheel instead of the keyboard. You can also change the race length from 100% uh, three to four hour battle to 50% or as low as desired. 
Most beginners choose to run with car damage, yellow flags, and pace lap off. Okay, sort of easier mode for you. Exactly. And as your experience level increases, you can change the weather from a beautiful sunny 70 degree day to cold. Do it in the slosh or rain or whatever. You bet. Okay. Uh, what we'll do is I'll take you into a quick race here. And before you race, uh, you can choose any of these nine tracks, which are replicated. These are real tracks. Actually from NASCAR Winston Cup circuits. And we'll go into Atlanta. But before you practice, qualify, or race, uh, go into the garage to fine tune your car. You can change the tires, uh, compound and pressure, mm -hmm. how much fuel you carry, the spoilers, suspension, gears. And a good thing is that beginners have an option of loading any of four pre-installed setups to get them up and running immediately. Okay, we'll go into a race here. And what you're going to see is not video playback. It's actually being rendered real time. You're uh -huh. actually in a 3D world. Okay, so this is really responding to all my right. movements in the video. Exactly. Space. So this is the race right here, and we actually have three different views. Yeah, that's the car, car view. view. We have an outside car view, and we actually have another outside car view. Now, while you're driving, you can keep track of your standings. You can see in the lower right-hand corner there uh, the standings. I just right. got a little accident here. <laughs> And I like to talk and race. Anyway. Right. Also, uh, you can talk to your pit crew to let your uh -huh. crew know what changes you need to so make. So when you get into the pit, here's what I want, here's what I need. It'll be done automatically, exactly. And you can see the clarity of the Super VGA graphics uh, on the machine. Now, when you're done racing, uh, you can go into a replay mode and uh, watch how the race unfolded from any of our 12 different camera angles. Wow, that's pretty cool. One other last feature I'd like to talk about is our multiplayer. This uh, has the option of letting our customers uh, call up and dial and race against each other via their modem, or you can do it with two computers with a direct connect null modem cable. Well, but I could race against a guy in another city somewhere. Well, how, what, world, how fast a modem do I need? 9600 baud rate. Well, pretty cool. Okay, thanks a lot. All right, now computer sports simulations are getting so good that it's like watching TV and having control of the players. Perhaps the best of the category is the new front page sports football from Sierra Online. Stephen Miles is here to coach us with it. Hi, sir. All right, now in this game, in front page sports, you can actually be a coach or a player, right? You can That's do good. either end. Right. All right, show us a little bit of the game. All right. The nice thing about Football Pro 95 is it was designed to be uh, attractive to a wide diversity of players. The novices are able to go in and play in what we call a coach-only mode, where you're able to just select a particular play. Let's go ahead and start a game that's already in process. Now we can see from the play calling screen here that you're able to select from the playbook any play that you'd like. In this case, we'll select a pass. Now all I have to do in the coach-only mode is to hit the button to actually do the hike, and from there the players on the field take over. Right, so the computer is running the action right now, right? And it tells you what happened. Now here we have a description of what happened in the play and the major players that were involved in that. We're also able to see an instant replay, so that if you want to see that over again, you can do that. But the nice thing about Front Page Sports Football Pro 95 is that you can really go in and edit the ones that you've done previously. For instance, this is one where Barry Sanders did a particularly long run for a touchdown. Now so we can this is watch an instant this. replay again of a, of a play that took place before. Correct. Here you can see Barry Sanders take the handoff, run around the side, the guy misses his tackle, and, and he runs in for a touchdown. A okay. Now what, if you wanted this to look a little more dramatic, you could rewind it back to the beginning pull up what we call the cams control, zoom in, and advance it a little ways. Now maybe when you're actually getting to the edge and you see this tackle coming over that gets missed, maybe you'll want to zoom in for dramatic effect. You can go in and frame by frame, zoom in a little bit, advance a frame, zoom in a little bit more, advance another frame, and then maybe you want to pivot it around so that you can see a better view of the man missing the tackle. From there, you can just continue on. And now, for a little more dramatic effect, when he goes into the end zone, maybe you want to see the guys that are pursuing. Got your sky cam working there. Right. And Barry goes in for the touchdown. Now you can see that again as you've edited it by turning off your cam's control, rewinding it, and then watching it again. And that edit you did before is all there in that replay. That's correct. All right, so this is not just sort of football simulation. This is TV director simulation, right? Exactly. <laughs> all right, so let, if we can get back to the game a minute now, uh, can I play another person using front page sports football? Yes. You can play another person. You can play against the computer. 
when you're playing another person, you can either have two joysticks, a joystick mm -hmm. and the keyboard. And sometime in 1995, we expect a version of this to be up on the Imagination Network, so you'll be able to play against other people that are next door or across the nation. And in that coach mode where I'm picking the plays where you're showing me right now, where do those plays come from? Can I design those plays? You can. You have some stock plays that come with the game. And you can also go in and edit those plays from our play editor so you can make them your own. Okay, front page sports football. That's our look at computer games. We'd be interested in hearing about your favorite games. You can get into the act here by talking to us online in the Computers on Television forum on CompuServe. The command is Go Chronicles. Thanks for joining us. I'm Stuart Chaffe. See you here next time on the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Hewlett Packard. Developing technology that lets you manage your PC from anywhere on the network, anywhere in the world. HP PCs, you're taking a close look at remote management. Additional funding is provided by LaserJet printers from Hewlett Packard. Everything from a new color solution to models designed specifically for small businesses. HP LaserJet printers, you do your job, we'll do ours. And the Software Publishers Association. Video cassette copies of this program are available. Computer Chronicles also publishes a companion newsletter containing details on products demonstrated and information on program topics. To order a video cassette or a newsletter, call 1 800 800 9520 or write Computer Chronicles. Please specify program subject for tapes. All orders include a free software program for auditing software use and information on the definitive guide to keeping your organization software legal.